In my first video about Godot Engine, I talked about how I have a particular project structure that I like to use. I didn't dwell on it, I just showed a quick example of it. In this video, I'd like to go into a little bit more detail about the structure I use and why. At the top level, I have a project folder, and inside there I'll put my readme file. Since I use GitHub, it's conventional to have a readme file that explains what the project is all about. Then, at that level, I also have a project folder which contains the Godot project itself. Inside of this folder, it looks like a conventional Godot project, and I use the excellent style guide from GDQuest, including the separation of the project into source and assets folders. Notice that the assets here are the ones that are ready for inclusion in the game. The other piece here to notice is the to import folder. This is at the top level of the directory, and inside here I have my project files, for example, GIMP files, or LMMS files, or Audacity files. These are the project files, that when I open those editors and export the assets, I can export them directly into this assets folder. This structure is convenient because it ensures that the entire project, including the sources for the assets, are all in version control. That has a lot of advantages, including the fact that I can go back in time if there's something I don't like. Maybe more importantly, if I'm working on a team, it means anyone in the team can regenerate those assets. I've seen the Save My Student projects where somebody gets sick or forgets their laptop or something like that, but because the project files are in version control, anyone can grab them and regenerate the assets for the game. Now if you're following my continuous integration approach that I talked about in another video, you might have a structure that looks like this as well. So you have your .github folder here, which contains your continuous integration configuration, and your build folder, which contains all the files from the web build, as well as your two important project folders as shown previously. So with that introduction out of the way, let me do a demonstration of how I can set up a project that uses this approach. Here I am in my projects folder. I'm going to go ahead and start by making the top level directory. I'll just call it video tutorial, and I'll go into that directory. From here, I'll run Godot Engine and make a new project. I can browse into my projects folder, find that video tutorial folder, and inside of here, I'll make one more level, which will be my project folder. And I'll select that for the Godot project. Notice that it uses as a project name just the name of that final path, but I want to make sure that this is called Video Tutorial, which in this case is the name of the project. Also, since I like to do HTML5 exports, I almost always choose OpenGL ES2. Let's go ahead and create that project. Let's just make a simple 2D scene and call it our game. Making sure that we create that source folder, again according to the GDQuest style guide. While we're here, we may as well also create the assets folder, although there's nothing in it yet. Let's say we're doing something like a game jam and we want to write our own music. Well, let me pop open LMMS. And let's see, how about a nice simple study four? Sounds pretty good. We'll save this project with Control S. And I don't want this default location. I want to go to my projects folder and the video tutorial folder. And in here, I'll create the to import folder. Now, of course, inside of this folder, I could create separate subfolders for music and art and so on. Uh, but for simplicity, let me just put this right here. And we'll call this theme. Good. Now, I'll export the AUG file. Whoops, I have to remember to click this. There we are. Now, I'll export the AUG file, not into the to import folder, but directly into the Assets folder as an AUG file. Make it loop. We're good to go. Okay, let's switch back over to Godot. Here in the Assets folder, we can see that it picks up the theme.aug, and let's go ahead and play it in this level. So now if I run this level, I hear that excellent steady four beat. Okay, that seems like a good logical unit of work. 
let's make sure we commit this in version control. Now at this point, I don't have a git repository yet, but it's easy enough to make one. So I'll say git init, and I'll say git status to see what's available. I could just add all of these right now, but I remember that in the project folder, there's a generated folder called dot import that we don't want to track. Let me show you where it is. On the shell, we have to use the dash a flag to see the dot files. There it is, dot import. I know I don't want that, and although I don't have a build folder yet, I know that I wouldn't want to track that either. So I'm going to go ahead and create my git ignore file. Obviously, you could use any text editor you want, but the text editor you probably want is Emacs. So I want to make sure I don't track the build folder, and in the project folder, I don't track the import folder. Good. Now you can see that the git ignore file is recognized as in the folder. So if I say git add dash capital A, that adds all the files. Um, I should say it stages them for commit. Now that looks pretty good. We can see the git ignore file, of course, that we just added. We have the og file and its .import file. Now that's important because this contains the import metadata for theme.og. Don't confuse that with the .import directory that we're ignoring. And the rest of this should look really familiar. And again, notice the project file for LMMS is included right here. So let's go ahead and commit these. Great. If I wanted to, I could make a repository on GitHub and push out to there, but this is good enough for now. So let's imagine a case where we decide that steady four beat really isn't quite what we want. We want something with a little bit more syncopation. Well, I still have LMMS open, so let's go in and just do this. How's that sound? You know, it's not great, but it's good enough for a video. So I'll save this again, control S, and I'll export again. Change this back to OG. And we have to make sure we export it into the right location, right? Not the location where the project is, but back over in the assets folder of the project. Yes, we do want to replace it. Make sure we export it as a loop. Now we can switch back to Godot. And because Godot monitors the file system, we should be able to just run this level and hear the new song. Great. Back to the shell, git status. We can see that theme.og is updated and theme.mmpz, that is the LMMS project file, are both updated. We also notice something else. There's a new file that was created, a backup file. Now, I don't mind having the backup files on my hard drive, but I definitely don't need to be uploading those to version control. So let's go ahead and modify that git ignore file to ignore those backup files. There, that wildcard should do it. We can see that that untracked file no longer shows up because it's in the git ignore, and of course, the git ignore is marked for change. Let's go ahead and commit that. Great. I hope that helps you understand not just the structure that I use, but why I like to use it. If you find this useful, let me know in the comments. And of course, happy programming.